Hey everyone, welcome back to my vlog channel. If you're new here, I'm Liz. Make sure that you subscribe because this is on my vlog channel, which is different than my main channels. So if you'd like to get these videos in your feed, make sure that you subscribe on this channel. I post all kinds of different videos, thrifting, different projects that don't make it onto my main channel. Today, the video I'm doing is kind of a highly requested video. I've had several people ask me, you know, like what are the essential craft supplies that I need? A lot of times people are starting out, they've never crafted before and they need help with like, you know, there's just so many craft things that you could get. So the idea is pretty overwhelming. So I put together 10 of like what I consider things that I use on a regular basis. Now they're not all tools. Some of them are not what you would consider tools, but they're definitely things I use anytime that I'm crafting. Now, trust me, I'm not going to hit everything and there's going to be things that I miss out on. So you guys are gonna to have to help me in the comments and list what you consider your 10 most important tools. Now, there's definitely more tools that I use that I'm not gonna to list today, but these are the things I think will really help you get started in crafting or things if you don't have that you should add to your list. And every product that I have a link for, I'm going to put down in the description box. So you can go and refer back to my list. So the first product has got to be my glue gun. Mine has got this extension cord on it. I have a glue gun by Surebonder. Um, this glue gun I've had for, oh, I don't know, at least a year now and it's held up great. The thing I always look for in a glue gun is that it has a low and a high heat setting. I prefer to keep mine on a low heat. I think when it's on high heat I, and if you burn yourself, it like will take off skin. So I always keep mine on a low setting. I don't know if that's controversial. Um, the one thing that I have found that has really helped, I used to buy my glue sticks from like Walmart. I would just get any old glue stick. I started using these construction adhesive glue sticks. They cost a little bit more than your average glue stick, but man, I have noticed a huge difference in how well these work versus the other glue sticks that I'm using. So I would recommend getting some sort of construction adhesive glue stick. I know Gorilla Glue makes a construction adhesive glue stick. Sure Bonder is the one I use, and I will try to find all these links for you guys. So glue gun is definitely number one. Anytime I craft, I use it. Okay, so number two is scissors. And I get comments all the time where people are like, you need to get a new pair of scissors. But if you guys are like me, I have kids in my house and they are constantly taking my scissors, moving them around the house. So I'm like lucky to get whatever pair of scissors that I can find basically. So I use whatever I have. I don't have one that I love. These black ones are pretty nice. I ordered these off of Amazon, but really just try different scissors. They're not that expensive. Figure out the ones you like. And you know, they start to get kind of dull and I'll get rid of them once they're dull or my kids have lost them somewhere so I never see them again. But I usually pick up a couple of pair of scissors every now and then, but you definitely need a decent pair of scissors for your craft projects. These craft scissors are actually from Dollar Tree and they work surprisingly well. Like I have found, I've been able to, you know, cut a lot with these. So, you know, for a dollar, you can get a decent pair. All right, so the next thing that I use frequently is Mod Podge. And I know Mod Podge is not a tool, but I kind of went more with the route of like what items you're gonna need to get some of your basic crafts done. So this little container of Mod Podge you can pick up at Dollar Tree for a dollar. And I like that it's matte. I don't like the shiny kind. And I've used this one on several projects. Um, it just works really well. If you watch my channel, you will see that I use Mod Podge all the time. Recently, I was trying to do a project that I wanted to be waterproof. So I came across this Mod Podge and it's a it's in a blue container and I picked it up at Walmart and it says water-based sealer. And from what I read online, they said that after using this, you can put the product in the dishwasher. I haven't tried to use it in a dishwasher. What I used mine for was I was doing like some bathroom um, vanity pieces that, you know, like it was a toothbrush holder that would get wet. And so I wanted to make sure that it was sealed with something better. So 
I just purchased this, but if you want something that's supposed to be dishwasher friendly, more water-based, you might wanna try this blue label one. And this one is matte as well. So outside of my glue stick, the next glue that I use all the time is E6000. It is just a really firm, grasping glue. If you have something that you need to hold together really well, I use this guy. I used to get these big old tubes of it, but man, I mean, it is hard to open. It's such a pain. So recently I found these little tubes of it and they come in like a pack of six or maybe five. I'm not really sure, but this is great because they have these nice little screw tops and you don't have to mess with the big tube. So if you're somebody who's been using like the big tube E6000, I have really preferred these because you can get maybe a couple of projects out of one tube and then you're done with it. So the next really simple thing that I use are Sharpies. I use these all the time in every project and typically I use black. Most of us have these around our house. If you can get the fine point ones, those are better. Using Sharpies for your crafts is something that you'll do quite a bit. The next thing I actually, you guys can see how close I keep it and that is foam brushes. I use foam brushes in so many of my projects. Um, you can wash them, but they're pretty inexpensive. I'll use it for everything that I'm painting white and then I'll get rid of it. But these you can pick up at Walmart, you can pick them up at Dollar Tree, and I just use them for every paint project. Now I will say I use foam brushes when I'm painting like little decor pieces. If I'm painting a nice piece of furniture, I will use an actual brush. All right, another thing that's not a tool, but you cannot watch one of my videos where you don't see me using this almost in every video. And that is my Waverly white chalk paint. I use this in so many projects, you guys. Waverly is the paint that you can pick up at Walmart in their craft section. And the chalk paint I use frequently. It's inexpensive, it works really well. I definitely always have a couple of these on hand and I'm using them frequently. So you guys may be looking over here at my toolbox. Recently, I purchased this off of Amazon because I found that when I was moving around my house, and this was when my craft space was at my house, um, now it's at an office, so I don't know if I necessarily need it, but it is handy. So anytime I was moving around the house to do crafts, I was finding that I was having to like go and find different things. And I thought a toolbox would be nice to keep it all contained. I really wanted something that was open so that I could just throw stuff in because that's kind of how I do things. But I really like this, grabbed it off of Amazon. So I'm gonna be telling you about a few of the things in this container. I wanted to give you my top 10 and then I'm gonna give you a little bit of extra at the end. So the next thing is sandpaper. Now I have little pieces of sandpaper everywhere in here, but if you're somebody who likes farmhouse and you're doing distressing, you're gonna go through a lot of sandpaper. You can buy sandpaper in a big container, but it's great to have on hand just to keep in your tools. So when you're crafting, you always need something to help you with measuring. So one thing I want to recommend is just using some kind of cutting mat. You can buy these anywhere. You can buy them on Amazon. You can buy them at like Joanne. You can buy them at Hobby Lobby. Um, Walmart sells them too. But the cool thing about a crafting mat is it has measurements on it. So if you don't want to use a tape measure, you can use the measurements on here. Um, you can, you know, measure things out. You can use it to cut. I know like a lot of times I'll cut with this little, what do they call these? Oh, this is called a rotary cutter. Um, if you're somebody who cuts a lot of fabric, um, a rotary cutter is good. When I used to, I used to make hair bows and headbands and I would use this all the time to cut through ribbon. I don't use this as much anymore just because for like home projects, I don't have to use this as much, but um, this is a tool that a lot of people use quite frequently. But I thought um, a cutting mat would be great because not only is it great for cutting, but you can use it for measuring. All right, so probably my most expensive thing that I wanna recommend for you guys is a drill. If you're somebody who's never had power tools, I think a drill is a great starting point. I had my husband 
get this one for me for my birthday this last year because I really wanted a pink drill. So I'll show you these in just a second. So I, I love this little drill. It's so great. It holds the charge so long. Along with your drill, you need to order a set of drill bits. So my husband recommended that I do these DeWalt and it came in like a set of three. So I have, you know, basically any drill bit that I could ever use. So if you're ever going to be like putting together wood projects or hanging things on a wall, you definitely want to drill. Even if you're just putting together like Ikea furniture, this is helpful. Like we bought this set. It's called the hex wrench set. And this works great with all of the Ikea furniture sets because they have like those hexagon shaped holes for their furniture but it's just so much quicker than using like a normal screwdriver. So I believe this drill that I bought was around 70 or $80. Um, the screw bits, I don't know exactly how much those were. Um, I will link them for you all. Also, this little hex set was not expensive at all. You could definitely ask for it for your birthday or Christmas like I did. Um, I really love having it. Okay, so if I had to just go with 10, those are the 10 that I would say, but I put a few other items on there. If you wanted some of my other suggestions for tools and mainly some of the things that I have in this container. So the next thing is painter's tape. Now I use painter's tape so often when I'm painting a project and I need to tape something off. I have the green kind and this uh, blue kind. The green kind is called frog tape and it's probably a little bit better better than the blue tape. It's not necessary. I mean, I've been able to get, you know, good, um, you know, straight lines with the blue tape, but if you're willing to spend a couple more dollars, the frog tape is pretty decent. All right. So the next thing I think is important to have is a hammer. And I have this cute little pink one in here and you just need a hammer for there's just different projects. Okay, let me think. I'm trying to think of like instances. Oh, whenever I'm um, putting fabric onto a bench, if the staples don't go in all the way, like I'll have to hammer it down. So I end up using this quite frequently. So another great tool is wire cutters and you can buy these a lot of different places. But what I use these for is for cutting the stems of floral. If you ever try to cut a floral stem with the scissors, it's really hard to do because of the wire in it, but these work great. So you can cut any of your floral stems using this, or if you have something that's just kind of difficult to cut, these are great. The other tool that you could probably get in so many different looks is a scraper tool. This one is by Cricut, but you could probably get something, you know, super inexpensive. I have something like this, but it's metal. I think you almost need like a plastic scraper tool. These are great, um, you know, for taking off vinyl. They're also great whenever you Mod Podge something to try to like get the air bubbles off, or if you put on like a piece of contact paper and you need to get the air bubbles out, this is great. Like I find myself reaching for this little thing very frequently. Next is a screwdriver set. Now, if you have a drill, you probably don't need a screwdriver set, but if you don't, or, you know, sometimes I use like screwdrivers for things that aren't really screwdriver related tools. I bought this cute little pink set of screwdrivers off of Amazon. They come with these larger ones. And then they also come with these little itty bitty screwdrivers. So I think it's good to have some kind of screwdriver, even if you have like an all in one type of screwdriver, um, you know, that works well. I'll also link to this tool caddy for you guys as well. All right. So those are my essential things that I use for crafting. I think if you were starting out crafting and you grab those things, you really would be set. Um, you guys will have to let me know in the comments, what are your crafting essentials? I'd love to know your top 10 and we can kind of share and get ideas from each other. If you're new to this channel, please make sure you guys subscribe. This is my blog channel and it really helps me out so that more people can find me and find the channel. And I'm going to link our last video if you guys missed that. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.